Hey, thanks for tuning in. I have a quick question for you. Have you ever missed a practice exam question about extensor tone or flexor synergy or something along the lines of that? Well, in this video, I'm gonna use a practice exam question and challenge your knowledge about the best interventions to treat extensor tone. So you ready for me? Let's think strategy. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in. Kyle Rice here, the MPT prep coach, and I help unlicensed PTs achieve a 700 or higher on their MPT so they finally get the money that they deserve and grow as a clinician. If you like practice exam questions and your preparation for the MPTE, you might wanna consider subscribing to this channel. All right, so let's go ahead and knock out our next case. So we have Erica is a 32 year old female who presents to the outpatient neurological recovery center or NRC with significant lower extremity extensor tone and complaints of difficulty ambulating. The patient has a five year history of frequent and characteristic bouts of excessive fatigue, paresthesias throughout her upper and lower extremities and trouble articulating what she needs. So which of the following is the best intervention to address her primary impairment? So we have A, Tai Chi in the pool with a water temperature of 87.5 degrees Fahrenheit. B is instruct the patient to lie in supine and take long deep breaths while surrounded by a warm blanket. C is instruct the patient to lie in hook line position with a therapy ball underneath the legs, rotating the lower body side to side. And then D is resistance upper extremity training in the pool with a water temperature of 90 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so when we start this question off, we see that we have our patient, Erica, she's 32 years of age. Um, she's presenting to the NRC with significant lower extremity extensor tone and difficulty or complaints of difficulty ambulating. So that's all pretty important. You know, as we progress through this question, it's really important for you to have an understanding of what is significant lower extremity extensor tone. Like, what is that? Um, and so with the lower extremity, that's going to be your hip extension. That's going to be your hip adduction, uh, hip internal rotation. You're also going to get knee extension and ankle plantar flexion. So that's really important for you to remember that positioning or that synergy uh, because it's going to be important for you to treat later on, all right? And so it says that the patient has complaints of difficulty ambulating, which we expect being that she has, you know, that uh, that extensor tone. So as we continue down the line, it says a five-year history of frequent and characteristic bouts of excessive fatigue. We got paresthesias in the upper extremity and lower extremities, and also trouble articulating what she needs. And so thinking about this, we already know that this is some type of neurological condition, no doubt about that, right? Um, and so we need to think about, well, we have this 32-year-old female, what type of neurological condition could this possibly be? Well, we have stroke, MS, uh, myasthenia gravis, uh, we have Gillian, uh, or, or, or Gilan Bure, as they say it. And then also we have, uh, ALS, right? So we have all these different neurological conditions and really that's not all. It could be much more than that. Uh, but those are the common ones. And the one thing about this question and this clinical presentation that really makes you think of multiple sclerosis is the fact that it's a five-year history of frequent and characteristic bouts, meaning like coming and going of this excessive fatigue, also the paresthesias, and then the trouble articulating or dysarthria, right? And so that's very consistent with someone who has multiple sclerosis, all right? So now we have this 32-year-old female, which the age fits and the gender fits. Um, we have uh, this patient with multiple sclerosis, and now which of the following is the best intervention to address the primary impairment, all right? And so when we look at this idea of primary impairment, we're really trying to solve the significant lower extremity extensor tone. That's what we're really trying to treat here because that's what's keeping her from, from walking, right? And that's what she's complaining of as a problem. So as we look at A, B, C, and D, you have to have a good understanding of what are the best interventions to treat lower extremity extensor tone. 
So A, Tai Chi in the pool with a water temperature of 87.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, Tai Chi, uh, tai Chi is a very awesome type of exercise that you can do in order to be meditative, calming, reduce things like spasticity or hyperactivity, hypertonicity of muscle tissue. So it's a really good relaxing technique or relaxing exercise style to use. So I love that part. But then it goes into say water temperature of 87.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And so it's really important for you to understand, well, when I'm putting a patient who has MS in, in the water, what are things that I need to keep in mind? And that is going to be the fact that people who have multiple sclerosis do not tolerate hot environments very well. They, they tend to get overheated really easily, called heat intolerance, and it makes their condition significantly worse. And so we want to make sure that we're not placing them in water that will exacerbate their symptoms. Well, then the question is, well, what is that water level? Like what's that water temperature that would exacerbate it? And so here's the deal with a therapeutic pool that typically is going to range from 89 to 94 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. So that's the typical therapeutic pool. However, we're not dealing with just any type of patient. We're dealing with someone who has heat intolerance. So we need to make sure that that water temperature is actually significantly less than that. All right. And so for patients with multiple sclerosis who are in aquatic therapy, it is recommended that the pool water be anywhere from 80 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit. That's huge knowledge for you to be able to take into the MPTE and dominate these types of questions. All right. So you need to know for your patients with multiple sclerosis, 80 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. And so with that in mind, A, is going to be contraindicated. We don't want to do A. And so we can go ahead and get rid of that. Next one is B. It says, instruct the patient to lie in supine, take long, deep breaths while surrounded by a warm blanket. Okay, well, with this answer, it says to instruct the patient to lie in supine, which I don't like that because it's reinforcing the extensor pattern. We already know that the patient's in hip extension, hip adduction, internal rotation, knee extension, um, also ankle plantar flexion, right? And so having the patient lie in supine is reinforcing that extensor tone. I don't like that. It's not the best technique to use to help. Um, taking the long, deep breaths, that's nice. That helps with, you know, relaxing the tissue and improving spasticity, but definitely not the first part of this answer. But as we get down to the final part of the answer, it says, while surrounded by a warm blanket, you know what? Our patient is heat intolerant, baby. Why are you going to put them surrounded by a warm blanket? That's not going to help them at all. If anything, it's going to make their situation worse. So we want to definitely avoid B. It's just not a good answer. Let's look at C. C says, instruct the patient to lie in hook lying position with a therapy ball underneath the legs, rotating the lower body side to side. Now, I like this answer. Reason being is that we're breaking up the lower extremity extensor tone, right? Hook line position, the person's in hip flexion. Hook line position with the therapy ball underneath the legs, the knees are in flexion, all right? Then we're rotating the body side to side, which also helps with spasticity, can even help with rigidity. So this is a really good technique to break up the lower extremity extensor tone, and it's actually the only answer that's really effectively answering the question. All right. So right now, C is is great. I like it as an answer. Um, let's look at D. D says resistance upper extremity training with the water temperature of 90 degrees. So can we eliminate this one? Can we eliminate this one, baby? Yeah, we can get rid of this answer choice because first of all, we already said that our pool water or our water temperature needs to be anywhere from 80 to 84 degrees. For our patients with multiple sclerosis, 90 is breaking the rules here, baby. So this is contraindicated, all right? And so we can get rid of D, leaving us with our final answer of C, instruct the patient to lie in a hook line position over a therapy ball and then rotating the legs side to side. If you got this question correct, congratulations, baby. If you didn't get this question correct, then maybe you selected, maybe you selected A. And you went for the Tai Chi, which is a good technique to use with your patients who have spasticity. 
you may not have known about the whole water temperature and what was appropriate and what is not. So it's really important that you understand these contraindications because these are the types of things that come up on exams like the MPTE or the practice exams that you'll take for the exam. All right. If you are someone who needs assistance with test taking strategy and you love questions like these, I want you to join me at destroythempte.com where I teach you all the tips and tricks that you need to dominate a test like the MPTE. All right. Dominate the MPTE. I will check you out on the next one. Have a good one.